Some things never change, even when we wish they would. BRD, or bovine respiratory disease, is still the number one disease threat to animal health that cattle producers battle. However, as Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter tells us, there are sound strategies, strong tools, and some new approaches that can help protect calves from BRD. Cows and calves graze across the grasslands of Deseret Cattle and Citrus in central Florida, a ranching operation started in 1950 that now stretches across nearly 300,000 acres. We have 45,000 mother cows here on the ranch and we, we really have been here for 73 years, so we're, we're deeply integrated into, into the community here and a part of Florida and a part of the, the cattle industry here in Florida. We use a rotational crossbreeding system here on the ranch, and so we have Sembra, Brangus, and Deseret Reds here on the ranch. Deseret Red is a, is a breed that we've developed over the last 10 or 12 years that's South Devon Brahmin. All of our cattle are at least a quarter Brahmin, a quarter to three-eighths Brahmin. Very, very important for, for this high humidity, hot, um, you know, wet environment here in central Florida. While the Deseret cattle are bred especially for the Florida environment, the crew still has to work hard to ensure the calves they raise get off to a strong, healthy start. In terms of disease prevention and kind of our herd health protocols and programs, are really, really important to us, number one, to do the right thing for the animals at the right time. You know, we we have the ca the calves are born here. This is a commercial cow calf operation, and we we are fully aware of the impacts, not only what we do from a, a vaccination or a health protocol standpoint, but from a nutrition standpoint as well. is is an opportunity to uh, to set that calf up so that we can continue to capture the value as they go on to the stalker and preconditioning phase and ultimately end up at the feed yard. And so there's there's a, certainly a return from a vaccination program standpoint. And, and really, you know, when we battle, just much like everybody else, we battle BRD. If we have a cat that suffers BRD early in life just because of the lung damage that we see associated with uh, bovine respiratory disease as a whole, uh, that, that tissue never gets back to 100%. So we, it really sets those calves back production-wise. They don't ever catch back up with the rest of the group, no matter how hard we try to treat. Uh, that lung damage, once it's there, it, it just doesn't get better. In fact, across the nation, BRD remains the biggest disease threat for calves, an ongoing battle that producers and veterinarians still must fight together. Bovine respiratory disease has probably been the biggest challenge that we've faced as a, as a cattle industry. It, it hasn't changed over the years. It's kind of like flying an airplane. You don't want to get behind, you want to stay ahead. And as long as you're head, ahead of that in, in choosing your protocols as far as vaccines, what you're going to use and timing of those vaccines and trying to cut down on the, the stress that some of these animals are seeing as they go through this production chain, uh, all that comes to play a huge advantage. Preventative is always easier than treatment. You know, if I have to treat disease, you know, treatment, we may get them better, we may not, and obviously we can reduce antibiotics, but preventive is always easier. It's going to help us manpower down the, down the road. If we can vaccinate those cattle and prevent them from being diseased, then I don't have to come back and treat them. And that saves labor, it saves time with that, it saves money, it saves, you know, antibiotics. So prevention is, is the key with that. I've always looked at vaccination as an, as an insurance program to help, to be, help us to be able to make sure that we've done at whatever stage it is, that we've done all that we could. We've controlled what we could control, and vaccination is, is an important part of that. Research has shown there is an opportunity to get ahead of BRD by vaccinating calves much earlier than was thought possible in the past. One of the things that has changed over the years is we didn't think we could vaccinate calves really early in their in their lifespan because we didn't think the vaccines would do a very good job just because of the colostral interfer inter interference that we would see or antibody interference from, from natural infection. So that has definitely changed. The research that's coming out now, especially with some of the vaccines that we have out there, we can vaccinate these calves extremely early and then try to prepare those animals as they start going through that food chain. Uh, and it, it has made a world of difference on the morbidity and mortality we're seeing in those calves. We've kind of re-looked at everything, started vaccinating these calves 28 days, 30 days prior to weaning, uh, even with a bona fide live pyramid vaccine. And when we take those calves and vaccinate them early, Revaccinate them at weaning, 
Um, those calves, we even have gone on some of these herds as much as 10% death loss down to less than 2% of death loss just with changing that vaccine protocol and managing the stressors on those calves, which again is a huge financial incentive to prevent that loss. And not only just that mortality rate that we brought down, but obviously just the morbidity rate, the number of sick calves that we have to treat has just dramatically reduced and saved lots of time, money, and obviously healthier calves. We have a huge advantage uh, at Beringer with the pyramid line of vaccines, mainly because of the adjuvant system that's used in that vaccine. The adjuvant system has been phenomenal and the way it works is using that vaccine in these early calves that have gotten really good colostrum from mom. So they're carrying high levels of antibody in their system to protect them. We can give that vaccine in the face of that high maternal antibody and still get an immune response because of that adjuvant system. That adjuvant system actually protects the vaccine virus and it presents it to the immune system of that calf so that we get a really nice immune response, even with that high amount of colostral antibody on board. In addition to vaccines, Dr. Wade says using low stress cattle handling methods can also help in preventing disease. And he says it's essential for producers to work closely with a veterinarian to develop overall health protocols for their herd. One of the biggest things I think I would encourage producers as a whole is if they don't have a good food animal veterinarian, find one. You need to have a veterinarian involved in that and they need to be totally involved in setting up those vaccine protocols and timing of those vaccines and making sure that we're doing it correctly. Deseret Cattle and Citrus is a past winner of the Environmental Stewardship Award and a National Beef Quality Assurance Award, so doing things right is a core value at this operation. And that includes providing the care that ensures their calves will thrive. Their response to the vaccination programs and, and as they go to our other ranches, we've seen a, a tremendous uptick in performance and, and really reduced mor morbidity and mortality. And that means dollars in our pocket, but it also means the animals are, are healthy and, and being treated in a way that, uh, that is the right thing to do. In Central Florida, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you'd like to learn more about building your own herd health and vaccine protocols, visit the website bicattlefirst.com.